गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन ओके सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस अबाउट वन पर्सन कंपनी राइट वी आर स्टार्टिंग कंपनीज एट ट्वेंटी थर्टी so till the last class we discussed everything about the introduction and what are the kinds of company salient features and one person company okay from today onwards we'll be starting the procedure if you want to start a company if you want to start a company then how can you start what are the requirements what are the um, procedures that you'll have to follow if you want to start your own company are you capable of starting a company are you <coughs> eligible to start a company everything will be discussing in uh, uh, future classes okay so today we'll start the first and foremost uh, foremost procedure of starting a company the procedure is formation and incorporation of company incorporation means starting of a company and formation means building a company okay so how can you build a company and how can you start a company both processes are different okay so let's get started open page number 274 of your modules i repeat page number 274 of your module topic 11.2 formation and incorporation of companies so if i talk about the process of incorporation and formation the first and foremost uh, the people who are starting up their company who are uh, who forms a company are known as promoters of the company are known as promoters of the company promoters uh, if a question comes in your exam that what is a uh, who is a promoter then promoter is a person who is forming the company who is starting the company okay so first and foremost section 3 the criteria how to start the procedure of how to start a company how to form a company is given in section 3 of the companies act 2013 it deals with how can a company be formed for any lawful purpose so section 3 clearly states that a company can only be formed for a legal purpose so first and foremost the thing that you have to keep in your mind is whenever you want to start a company you are allowed to start a company only when the purpose of starting that company is lawful like for example i want to sell ice creams so i want to start an ice cream company so here the object of starting in uh, starting a company is to purchase sell ice creams okay so this is lawful so i can create a ice cream company here but for example i want to uh, produce liquor i want to produce liquor that to without having any license okay so this is illegal if you want to produce liquor if you want to sell liquor if you want to purchase liquor then you should have license for it if you do not have an id if you do not have a license then you cannot sell liquor you cannot produce liquor so now we are starting a company to sell and purchase liquor and that to without license so here the complete object of forming a company is unlawful so here company cannot be form so first and foremost you have to stick to the provisions of section 3 which say which provides that company can only be formed for any lawful purpose if you do not have any lawful purpose then you cannot form a company so there are different different steps in which a company is form if you want to form a company if you want to build a company you have to follow some procedures you have have to follow some step so the first step in forming the company is you have to uh, have number of members okay the criteria of number of members is to be fulfilled like for example we have studied already that if you want to open a public company then you should have uh, minimum 7 members if you do not have minimum 7 members you cannot start a public company i alone 
cannot start a public company i am uh, carrying on a lawful business but yet the number of members are not complete i am only a single person so i cannot start a public company on the other hand if i want to start a private company then i should have minimum two members okay if i do not have minimum two members i cannot start a private company either but if i want to start an opc if i want to form an opc one person company then i am eligible so the first and foremost step of forming a company is you have to maintain the number of members if at any time if at any time number of members falls below the minimum level okay then be ready for the penalty now for example i have started a company i have formed a public company and the minimum requirement of members for public company is 7 you should have minimum 7 numbers at the time when we started this company when we formed this company at that time we were 7 members but now one member died so in that case you cannot be 6 members now you will have to appoint one more new member to uh, enjoy the status of public company a period of 182 days is given to you to ensure that one more member is ad, uh, added so um, sorry a period of 6 months is given to you not 182 days 6 months is given to you if in 6 months you are not able to employ one more uh, you are not able to get one more member then in that case you will have to bear the penalties and be ready for the punishment okay so the first and foremost criteria the first and foremost step to um, form a company is there must be minimum number of members and maximum numbers cannot be exceeded okay like for forming a public company there is no limit on maximum number but forming a private company the number of members should not exceed 200 at any point of time how to calculate this to uh, members which th that we have already discussed that employees are not included um previous shareholders are also not included etc that we have already discussed in the previous classes so first and foremost what you have to do you have to maintain minimum and maximum number of members once you have decided that yes these 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 persons will be the members of the company now what next the second step is selection of name now if you want to start a company then you'll have to select a name for it okay Uh, uh every company need to get itself registered by roc now if you want to get your company registered from roc then what name you will be giving to the company so second option is you'll have to give uh, you'll have to take a name select a name for your company if uh, selecting a name also uh, you need to be very precise if you want to select a name because name a proper name should be uh, selected there is a restriction in certain limit whenever you are selecting an uh, the name of a company there is a rule rule 8 rule 8 of the companies act says that you have to select a proper name there uh, there are certain restrictions given in rule 8 that these names cannot be taken if uh, you cannot take any name which is undesirable this name list of undesirable names is given in rule 8 like for example your the name of your company should not uh, uh, should not uh, like hurt the sentiments of people okay like you do you cannot name your company uh, which is so that it hurts the sentiments of the people like it can create riots among uh, among the people of the country so being uh, selecting the name you have to be very precise you cannot select any name which is already a name of a existing company okay like for example reliance is also Re reliance is existing in the market so i want to start my own company i cannot uh, uh, name my company as reliance because it is already in existence similarly you cannot select a name which have any resemblance with the name of the company which is already in existence like for example reliance is in existence so i cannot keep my company's name mega reliance company no 
because there is a word reliance included here and that means what is it is resembling from the name of a company which is already in existence so you'll have to keep certain things in mind you cannot keep a name which uh, you cannot copy trademark of any other company you cannot copy the logo of another company so choosing a name is a very um, brainstorming process okay you have to apply a lot of brains you will have to uh, think very precisely while obtaining the name if the name of the company uh, is against the public policy is uh, uh, but it it is targeting certain group of people then also you cannot keep that name okay so selecting name of the company is also a very big task for the company so what happens now company uh, whenever you are starting a company promoter gives five names to the registrar of the company that these are the preferences these five names i have selected for my company on the basis of your preferences number 1 number 2 number 3 number least preferable name should be kept on five number so registrar of company will check these five names and whichever it seems that that is suitable that is not resembling with any other company that is not hurting any a uh, community sent sentiment that is not against the public policy that is not undesirable basically in one word if i conclude if your name is not undesirable then the registrar of company will select your select a name okay so the second step whenever you are forming a company uh, you have to give a number uh, a preference of names you have to select a name for the company now the reservation of name is given in form number inc1 inc1 that is a form named inc1 is to be fulfilled in which it is given that what name you want and it it will be uh, you'll have to submit that form with the roc registrar of company with uh, whatever fees is required okay along with fee so the second step is to select the name the name is selected by promoters um next step the next step third step to file a company is you have to provide for the uh, you have to provide certain documents you have to moment uh, you have to follow a process for incorporation and the pro process uh, whatever uh, documents are required whatever procedure is required it is given in section 7 of the companies act section 7 says that you will have to file all the necessary documents to the registrar of the company if you want to open a company okay now what are these procedures what are these uh, what are these documents let us discuss one by one it is on page number right now we are on page number 275 okay so firstly you have to um, maintain moa and aoa you have to make your memorandum of association and articles of association so the first procedure the first document that is required by if you want to start a company is making of memorandum of association and articles of association now just making is not enough you cannot make it and submit it to the roc no you'll have to make it and it will be signed by all the subscribers to the memorandum okay whosoever is a subscriber of memorandum all that person will be um, signing on that memorandum the signing means that they have consent they have together made this memorandum of association and articles of association so like for example if me and two other members are starting the company so we are basically technically the promoters or we can say that subscribers we have made the memorandum of association so we are the subscribers of the uh, mo and aoa so whenever you are making it you cannot submit it as it is all the um, documents uh, required sign of alag alag signatories okay so here if i talk about mo and an aoa if you are forming an mo and aoa you will have to submit that to the registrar of the company which should have which must have signature of all the promo, uh, subscribers of memorandum of association second you will have to um, give a document which is a declaration declaration that 
all the requirements of the act are being fulfilled, you have to make a declaration which states that whatever are the requirements of the act, whatever you want or uh, the details provided by us are uh, in, in compliance with all the rules and regulations of the Companies Act. We have not violated any uh, compliance of the law. So you'll have to make a declaration like that and you'll have to submit that declaration also to the registrar of company. Now in that, that in this declaration also there will be a signature whose signature you'll have to get the signature of an advocate either an advocate or a CA or a CS or a CMA. OK, that is whenever you are uh, making this declaration this this declaration will sign will be signed by two people first it will be signed by either an advocate whosoever you are appointing as an advocate of your company that advocate or company secretary or chartered accountant or a cost accountant um above from any four of the you ha you'll have to choose any one from the above stated people that is advocate cs yes or cma one sign will be of that person and second signature will be the person named in the AOA. Whosoever's name you have mentioned in the AOA, it could be the director of the company, it could be the manager of the company or it could be the secretary of the company. OK, whatever you can write anybody's name in the AOA. So uh, signature of that person will also be there. Like for example, you have stated your director's name in the articles of association of the company. So in that situation, uh, along with any advocate CACS or CMA, the signature of that director will also be required on this declaration. OK, so the second document that is required by the registrar of the company if you want to start a company is the declaration that we have provided all the details that are required by the act. We have not violated any rules and regulations and we have provided all the uh, information that you that is required by the Companies Act. Thirdly, Another one more declaration which will be from each subscriber, uh, each subscriber of memorandum of association and the person named as first director. OK, now what is a first director? Before discussing the point, I will let you know that whenever you are starting a company, whenever you are starting a company, the promoters appoint directors. OK that will be direct, uh, completely handling the companies and that director will be appointed who is eligible to be appointed as a director. OK, that is who has a director identification number. What are the eligibility criteria of directors, etc. that will be studying in future classes? OK, there is a complete topic called as directors. So if a person is eligible to be appointed as a director, then he can be appointed. Then only he can be appointed as a director and that person who was appointed by the promoter of the company like director is not appointed by the um, uh, managing people of the company. It is directly uh, uh, sometimes it is appointed by the shareholders. Sometimes it is appointed by the um, government etc. But there are alag -alag criteria. Uh, there are different different uh, uh, categories of director. So the first director are the directors which are appointed by the promoters while starting the company. OK, whenever you are starting the company, the promoters who has decided the directors will be the lead uh, directors of the company. Those directors are known as first directors. So a declaration in form number INC 9, form number INC 9, a declaration has to be uh, filed in which it is stated that the first directors, uh, he is not convicted OK that the director you have appointed has not been convicted in any offense in connection with the compliances in connection with the uh, promotion formation or management of any company. OK, so if you have been appointed as a director, you cannot involve yourself into any kind of uh, such activities which could lead you to the jail. So here in INC 9, 
you have to file a declaration. You have to give a declaration which states that the directors which are appointed by the promoters, the first directors, uh, these are those person who has never been, who has not been convicted for the purpose of formation and management and uh, incorporation of the company and he has not found guilty of causing fraud of causing fraud or any breach of duty in any companies act not like not in this company that we are start uh, we have stated now for example i am a director who has been appointed in this company but and uh, directors also plays a very important role in incorporation of the company so I have not done anything wrong. I have not been convicted. I have not done any fraud while starting this company. But earlier I was a director of some other company and I created a fraud there and I um, I had the charges of fraud in that company. So here I cannot be the director. OK, so this clearly states that whenever you are appointing a director, first director technically, so that person should not be guilty of any fraud in this Companies Act or any previous. That is if he has created fraud under Companies Act 1956 also, then also he cannot be appointed as a director. So in INC 9, form number INC 9, you will uh, give a declaration that the first director appointed by the promoters of the company is not convicted in any offense and he has not been found uh, guilty of creating any fraudulent activities and that the all the documents that are filed with the registrar contains information that is correct and complete this is also declaration uh, is, is to be made in inc form number inc 9 okay that the uh, the information provided by the directors of the company is complete and is uh, true. OK, these people are not hiding anything from the ROC. These people are not uh, are providing the complete scenario, complete picture of the company. So the second step is uh, so the third step uh, for uh, forming a company is you have to uh, maintain, uh, give certain documents. These document contains MOAs, which is signed by all the uh, subscribers of the MOA. Second declaration, which states that all the uh, uh, information, all the requirements are being fulfilled by compiling with the company's law. And third, a declaration uh, by the promoters stating that directors, that first directors of the company are very pure. OK, so these are the declarations which are to be fulfilled in different different forms. Uh, next step to incorporate a company is you have to uh, maintain all the you have to just give the address of all the registered office is established. OK, wherever you are establishing your office, you'll have to give the address of your office. OK, if you are not giving the address, then your incorporation process will be incomplete. So next step is you have to give the address to the ROC. Then you have to um, uh, give the identity proof of all the subscribers. OK, that these are the subscribers of memorandum of association and you'll have to give their identity proofs also so that uh, the name address uh, and everything could be uh, could be uh, checked by the ROC. So next is you have to give all the identity proof, uh, uh, identity proof, all the particulars that is name, address, wherever they are residing, wherever they are. Uh, we can say that all the requirements that a person have that will be submitted by the uh, by submitted by them to the ROC with identity proofs to rectify uh, to check whether these uh, um, requirements are correct or not. Next is the particulars of the person mentioned in the articles as the first directors of the company. Along with the subscribers of MOA, even you have to provide all the details of the first directors. The first director's name, address, wherever he's residing, wherever, whatever the uh, is he having all the requirements of being a director, etc. All these documents will also be given 
uh, along with the other documents. OK, and then the consent to act as director's company in such form as may be prescribed. OK, um, with the name and address, etc. with the all the requirements of the directors, particulars of a person, you'll also be requiring the consent that yes, you have appointed him as a director, but has he accepted this post? Has he accepted to be the director of the company? So a written consent will also be filed, will also be filed. After uh, for fulfilling all these um, documents and details, now next step will be uh, if the registrar of the company thinks that yes, everything is correct here and you can start a company. The registrar of the company will issue a certificate of incorporation. A registrar of the company will issue a certificate of incorporation. Then it will give you an uh, it will allot a company corporation identification number also. The, OK, what is corporation identification number? Corporate identity identification number is a unique number that is given by every company that is given for every company. Every company will have its own corporate identity number. We can also call it at SIN. C I N C. OK, so if the ROC forms it suitable that yes, everything is as per the requirement as per the compliance of the act, then it will provide you an incorporation certificate along with SIN corporate identity number. This number shows that from today onwards you this company will have a, a succession, a perpetual succession. This company will uh, be uh, no uh, uh, will have this number till it is wound up. OK, so what the registrar of company will do? It will give you a SIN that is corporate identi uh, identity number. And last is you'll have to uh, maintain a copy of all the documents and uh, uh, information that you have provided to the ROC with you as a proof that yes, you have provided everything correctly. So this is a procedure of formation of incorporation of a company. OK, so whenever you are starting a company, whenever you are starting a company, you will have to follow this procedure. The first and foremost is you'll have to decide the promoters that who will be the promoters of the company. Then promoters will follow this procedure. The first step will be you'll have to maintain the uh, limit of members. That is how many members will be there in the company. OK, so you'll have to uh, stick to the minimum and maximum number of members which are to be involved. Next it is you'll have to uh, select a name. The promoters will have to select a name uh, keeping rule uh, eight in the mind that the name is not undesirable. OK, it is not resembling from any existence company. It is not um, um, hurting the sentiments of any community. It is not at um, etc. OK, and next uh, you'll have to fall. Uh, you'll have to just uh, give certain other documents also. You'll have to give other documents also. You'll have to submit other documents to the Registrar of the company. What are these other documents? Firstly, it is MO and AOA, which will be signed by all the subscribers of Memorandum of Association. Second, it will be given uh, a declaration by the either first advocate, CA, CS, or CMA, plus the director, members, or manager, or secretary of a company with the signature of both of them. A declaration will be made, which will state that. All the documents, all the details that has been provided by us are with the compilance of the company that. And lastly, you will be given the uh, details that uh, details of the first directors that the first directors have um, are not being convicted, are not being guilty of fraud and in this act or any other act and have completely provide complete information. Then you give the address of the um, registered office wherever your registered office will be. Then you have to provide the particulars of every subscribers of the uh, memorandum with the with their ID proofs. Then you'll have to provide all the particulars of the directors first directors. 
then you'll have to uh, provide a consent of director that whether he want to act as a director or not then after compiling with all these uh, rules if the registrar of company finds that your your company is suitable everything is perfect here then it will be issuing a firstly it will be issuing a incorporation certificate letter of in uh, certificate of incorporation and second it will be giving you a unique sin a unique corporate identity number once you uh, obtain this identity number you can start your company you can start the um, work of the company okay you can start your business and lastly you'll have to keep all the copies of whatever document you have provided now in um, whatever we have discussed here in the rules every document is filed uh, in respective form in respective forms like if you want to um, give your name then the name the registration of name is given in form inc1 you'll have to file form inc1 if you want to start a company okay you the name along with the fee you'll have to uh, file inc1 then uh, if we talk about uh, declaration declaration by the uh, cacs etc that point in that situation form number inc14 inc14 the declaration is given in form number inc14 then the declaration of subscribers to memorandum of association and first directors it is given in inc9 so different different forms are full, fulfill uh, are filled for different different purposes you'll have to stick to that form you'll have to uh, maintain the format of that forms and you cannot just write on a piece of paper and give it to the registrar of company no the registrar of the company has provided uh, different different forms for different different purposes so if, if you want to go with the procedural uh, procedure of the incorporation then you'll have to file um, whatever form is required okay you cannot just write it anywhere and give it to the registrar of the company these forms are available online also you can start your incorporate your company online as well you can submit all these documents online there is no necessary that uh, you have to go physically to the registrar of the company and submit all these forms submit all these documents no nowadays the facilities has been provided to you that you can fulfill all these documents online also okay so while we were discussing the formation of company many times we have discussed the terms moa and aoa memorandum of association and articles of association now what uh, one by one we'll be discussing that what a memorandum of association is and what an article of association is till here anybody has any doubt in the process of incorporation it is very important it will be a very important topic here as well as if you are doing any other uh, course if you are doing ca cs cma if you are doing law if you are doing um, any uh, university exams everywhere you'll find this topic companies act and this is a very important question that how a company is incorporated in every field okay so i hope everything is clear if you have any doubt ask me here because it is very important if you want to in future also if you want to do a uh, practice for uh, legal then if you want to do practice in companies act then this will also uh, provide you it and then this topic will be very helpful this can uh, help you earn okay so let us discuss now the next topic is memorandum of association now memorandum of association we can say that it is the backbone of the company okay everything that is required in the company everything that you will be doing in the company everything each and everything is given in the memorandum of association and uh, uh, if you are starting a company if you have uh, maintained a memorandum of association if you want to do any business activity if you want to do uh, any if you want to take loan if you want to introduce capital if you want to um, uh, get yourself registered etc you cannot anything not stated in your memorandum of association okay so 
how to remember this okay uh what i have done is i have created a single page like this okay to make you remember uh in this in this page you can uh, see that i have written different different steps so what you can do is in your uh, modules it is given in a quite lengthy procedure so you can just form a short notes and you can just make a abbreviation okay and you can also go with the common sense that if you want to start if i was the promoter of the company if, and i wanted to start a company then what would be the steps that i had to follow so it is very particular that if i want to start a company then firstly i'll have to have minimum number of members then only i'll be able to start a company chalo bhai minimum members aa gaye then what next next i'll have to if i'm starting a company then i'll have to give a name to that company right so what will be the name so this 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 will be the name now the name is there now next step is you want to uh, have memorandum of association article of association so how will you make so if you will go with the common sense then these steps are very easy and the best way to remember these steps is just write these steps on one page okay write these steps on one page uh, with a small with a brief description so that um in the examination this process this step will be clear to you just make a flow chart so that in short you can revise every time okay so try to make flow charts if you want to remember everything because many forms are fulfilled now this was just a process of incorporation in future will be studying how uh, many other procedures also that if you want to alter how can a director be appointed what is the procedure of appointing a director what is the procedure of uh, if you want to now for example you have created a memorandum of association but you forgot something now you need to alter this memorandum of association so how can what is the procedure of altering a moa what is the procedure of altering aoa etc there are many procedures that will be studying in this chapter so the best way is to get your uh, get everything written on one page uh, in the diagrammatic form okay so it will be very helpful if you'll write point to point if you'll write step by step then it will be very helpful for you else you'll get confused a direct question in your examination can be asked that if you want to um, like uh, give your name give the name of your company which form is to be fulfilled then prompt answer should come that inc1 inc1 is to be fulfilled if you want to start a company okay uh, if you want to select the name of the company so many forms will be studying will be studying inc forms will be studying mgt forms will be studying uh, rules table table a table b table c clauses etc there are there are many concepts in this company law so the best way to remember each and everything is write it down if you are writing everything down if you are uh, uh, writing everything step by step then it will be very helpful for you if you are just reading from the modules just every day even if you are reading it every day also then also there is a very uh, higher probability that you might skip something okay you might uh, forget something in the examination so if you want that everything is clear and there is no confusion just write it down like i because i am teaching you then i have to prepare each and every topic again and again okay so there is no time for me that i read each and every topic so i have already created these flow charts so that at, at at any point of time if somebody asks me that teach me now then i am able to teach at that time because i have created those flow charts i have maintained that diagrammatic representation of everything whatever i am teaching you okay so it is very helpful helpful for me so for uh, from personal experience i'm telling you that just try to this uh, this homework you should do it daily that whatever i have taught today try to make your own notes okay try to uh, cut short everything that i have studied today so that you can write it in the piece of paper like for example now we are starting memorandum of association so this memorandum of association have five clauses so how to remember these five clauses you can just draw a diagram like this okay now in this diagram what i have done i have just um, 
uh, explain each and every clause. So if you'll read from your module, there is a topic of MOA which have two to three pages, but only in this much space I have covered the entire topic. So try to make such flows flow charts try to make such diagrams because uh, diagram attracts the brain. OK, and it is easier for you to study with the help of these diagrams. OK, let's get back to the topic. We were starting the memorandum of association. So whenever you are um, starting the company, the backbone of your company is memorandum of association because it have everything. And once you just made your memorandum of association, the alteration process is very lengthy. So try to try not to make any mistake whenever you are creating a, a memorandum of association. So MOA of a company basically have five clauses. One, it is name clause. Second situation clause, third object clause, fourth liability clause, and fifth is capital clause. Now, what are these clauses? We'll have to remember all these five clauses because a direct question in your examination can come that what is the situation clause or what is name clause or what is object clause. OK, so basically when we are starting a company, first and foremost, the memorandum of association has a name clause. Name clause uh, name clause means that whenever you are starting a company in that name clause, you'll have to give the name of your company. You'll have to write down the name of the company along with the abbreviation limited or private limited. OK, like for example, if you are starting a public company, then you'll have to attach an abbreviation limited with it. Like for example, if I'm starting a company which is a public company and the name of my company is Mega. OK, the name of my company is Mega, so I cannot just write Mega and company. No, I'll have to attach the word limited with my name. OK, if I haven't, if I am opening a public company, if I am not attaching this name, the name of the company will not be valid. So if you are opening a company, a public company, then the abbreviation limited should be attached with your name. It is compulsory. Then if you are opening a private company, then a name uh, the abbreviation private limited shall be attached with your name. Now if I'm opening Mega company Mega, the name of my company is Mega and it is a private company, then I'll have to name it as Mega private limited. Mega private limited. I cannot just name my company as Mega and company Mega and sons Mega and daughter. No, I cannot do like that. I'll have to use these abbreviation. If I'm opening a private company, I'll have to attach private limited with the name of the company. And if I'm opening a public company, then I'll have to attach an uh, abbreviation limited with the company. Even if you are having a, uh, if even government is opening a company, if it is a government company, then also limited word is to be attached with the company. Okay, uh, like uh, BSNL. OK, BSNL limited It is limited company because it is opened by the it is a government company. So the name um, Bharat Sanchar Nigam limited is given there. OK, so why limited? Because it is a government company. So it is necessary that whatever company you are opening in the name clause, you will have to give the name of the company attached with the word limited or private limited. One thing that is to be noted here is such rule that is to attach limited or uh, private limited is not applicable on section 8 companies. If you are opening a section 8 company, section 8 companies we have already discussed. A section 8 company is a company which is incorporated whose um, motive is just to promote art, commerce, etc. whose motive is just a charitable purpose, etc. Those are Section 8 companies. OK, so if you are incorporating a Section 8 company, then uh, it is not necessary that you attach a word private limited or limited to it. OK, so this is an exception in a Section 8 company in the name clause. It is not required that you attach these abbreviation. So in the name first and foremost, the memorandum of association of uh, a company contains a name clause. In the name clause, you have to provide the name of the company along with the attachment either limited or private limited depending upon the type of company you are uh, opening. Next clause which is there is situation clause. 
in the situation clause you'll have to give the state in which roc is to be situated in which state you will be starting a company and in which state you will be getting your roc registered now for example i'm opening a company in rajasthan and i am uh, getting my company registered with the registrar of company of rajasthan then in this situational clause in this situation clause i'll be writing that my company is registered with phalana phalana roc okay my company is registered with so and so roc i have registered i have get my company registered with the registrar of company of rajasthan okay so in the situation clause situation clause is very easy you'll just have to state in which registrar of company you will be uh, is to be situated where your registrar of the company will be there next clause in the memorandum of association is object clause now this is a very important clause because in this clause you will state the objects for which you have incorporated this company why you have incorporated this company why you have formed this company you'll have to state the objects that these 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 are the objectives of my company now for example if i have opened a company for selling and purchasing of ice creams and my object will be selling and purchasing ice cream so i will be uh, stating my objects that these 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 are my objects i can purchase ice cream i can sell ice cream i can pro uh, purchase products which are important for producing ice cream i can purchase machinery which is required to uh, produce ice creams okay so now this uh, if i am starting a company i cannot go beyond the object clause like for example i have stated four objects like i have stated that i will i am opening this company to produce ice cream to purchase ice cream to sell ice cream then to uh, purchase some products which are required for producing the ice cream and to purchase the machinery that is required then these are the objects now if i am uh, purchasing a land for investment so i am not allowed to purchase a land for investment purpose on the name of this company because it is not stated in the object clause of the memorandum of association so you are getting my point my point here is whatever you have stated in your object clause of memorandum of association you cannot go beyond that okay you have to stick to whatever objects you have stated in the memorandum of association if you are violating anything which is not written in the object clause if you are doing something which is not written here it is not valid so the next clause you have is object clause in which you clearly state the object of the company that for what purpose for what uh, purpose you are incorporating your company uh, one more thing you have to keep in mind here is if you are opening a section 8 company then this clause is also not required because the object of section 8 company is quite clear the definition of the section 8 company itself uh, provides the object that, that these companies are uh, open for these purpose only so again these uh, object clause wala provision is also not applicable on section 8 companies reason behind this is that the objects are clearly stated there next you have is liability clause next clause which is there in uh, memorandum of association is liability clause in the liability clause it is clearly stated that the members of the company whether they will have uh, limited liability or unlimited liability whether your company will be uh, having whether your company will be limited by shares or limited by guarantee so in this clause in this liability clause you will have to clearly state that i am incorporating this company and the members of my company will be liable only till the extent of share capital they are having okay or only to the extent of like for example if you have created an unlimited liability company so you have to state that i have created an uh, unlimited liability company and in case of any financial crisis my members We, uh, the my members will have unlimited liability that is the personal property of my, my, my members can also taken into account or for example if you have created a company limited by shares then you will have to state that i have incorporated this company and this company is limited by 
shares. So the liability of my members will be just limited to the extent of the share holding they are having. My members cannot be taken into account beyond that limit. That is beyond the share capital they are having. Or for example, if you are starting a company limited by guarantee, then in that case you'll have to clearly state in the in this liability clause that I have created a company which is limited by guarantee. And for example, in guarantee for assets. So in the case of winding up, the members have, will have uh, guarantee uh, will have uh, just control over the assets. The, uh, they will have to give the amount which is equivalent to the assets of the company or if you have any fixed amount we have already discussed everything in the uh, company uh, in the types of company when we were discussing that what a company what is a company limited by shares and limited by guarantee so this is the liability clause where you clearly have to uh, state that what kind of liability your members will have uh, whether they will have unlimited liability whether they will have limited liability up to the extent of share capital, whether they will have limited liability um, by limited liability limited by guarantee, etc., or unlimited liability, whatever. So in this liability clause, you'll have to state everything. And last clause of uh, memorandum of association is capital clause. Okay, so the, the amount of share capital with which the company is to be registered. Okay. Um, and in future also what will be the paid up share capital, what will be the uh, complete share that, that will be mentioned in this capital clause. Like for example, if I've started a company and the paid up share capital is one crore. Okay, so at any point of time, my share capital should not exceed one crore because paid up share capital is already mentioned. So in this capital clause, the number of shares that each subscriber of memorandum will take is mentioned. The number of shares, the number of fixed amount and number of shares which um, the subscribers to the memorandum of association agrees to it. OK, that number will be mentioned here so that in the particular lifespan of this company, this share cap, this, there should uh, you should not um, uh, exceed this limit. OK, so in any future, if you want to alter this, you can you can, but there is a procedure. The procedure will be studying in future. So this is the capital clause of the memorandum of association. So whenever you are opening a memorandum of association, you'll have to uh, fulfill all these clauses. One is name clause. Second is situational clause. Third is object clause. Fourth is liability clause and last is capital clause. In name clause, you'll have to uh, register the name of the company along with the abbreviation limited, either limited or private limited, depending on the type of the company. Second is situation clause where you have to state in which ROC is to be situated. Third is object clause where you'll have to state all the objects that why are you opening this company? Why are you, why you are incorporating this company? Next, it is the liability clause. Liability clause in liability clause, you'll have to uh, uh, maintain. Uh, you'll have to write down the liability that whatever the liability of members will be, will it be unlimited? Will it be limited by shares or will it be limited by guarantee? And the last, it is capital clause where you'll have to uh, write down whatever the subscribers of memorandum of association have decided to keep it as a paid up share capital, a fixed amount, even the number of shares that each subscribers of mem memorandums will be taking, etc. OK, and in case of one person company, if you are starting a one person company, then the name of the person who is um, uh, who will be the nominee that also you will have to uh, write in the memorandum of association. So if you are starting a memorandum, uh, if you are starting a one person company, then along with these five clauses, you'll, you will also have to uh, give the name of the nominee that in case of death, insanity of the member because it has only one member. So that is why you will have to uh, write down in the memorandum of association that in case of death of this member, uh, Mr. So and so will be the will be will step into the foot of member and will become the member of the company. So you'll have to write that and that uh, uh, you'll have to attach a consent statement of that member that uh, 
uh, whatever nominee you have appointed that nominee has been appointed with his own consent he was willing to be appointed okay so if you are uh, opening a private company or public company you'll have to uh, stick to these five clauses but if you are opening a um, one person company then along with these five clauses one more and the information that you'll have to state in the memorandum of association is the name of the memin, uh, name of the nominee that in case of death or insanity who will step into the, the foot of member okay clear any doubt till here uh, there are certain form of memorandums okay it is table a table b table c table d table e in table a uh, the this form is this schedule is full uh, fulfilled when memorandum of association of company by limited limited by shares table b is to be filled when it is limited by guarantee not having share capital table c will be filled when it is guarant uh, company having uh, limited to the uh, company having liability limited to guarantee and which is having share capital like different different these are the names of different different forms different different schedules that are to be fulfilled that in which table you'll have to full uh, you'll have to file if you are uh, having a company limited by shares then you'll have to file in table number a okay so these are certain forms that you'll have to remember okay any doubt till here so that's all for today today we have discussed two topics one is how you can incorporate a company and second is if you are uh, how you have to prepare the memorandum of association of the company okay so these are the two things that we have discussed today any doubt till here those who have any doubts you can ask me here itself and those who do not have any doubts can leave the class okay that's all for today actually these are not notes these are just for understanding purposes okay so if you want i can um, in the next class whatever i will be preparing these flow charts i will upload it here i will share with you okay on the screen so that it will be easier for you to understand i will do that in the next class okay i hope everybody understood whatever we have discussed today and there are no doubts okay thank you everyone have a very nice evening shall we stop the class you guys can leave okay